All right, it's noon, so we're going to get started. This is Staff CHR Standing Penalties and Group Penalty Thresholds. It will be presented by Eric uh, Rolfs. Uh, if this is not the presentation you are here for, you can still stay. That's up to you. Um, we do want to thank the Evergreen Community Development Initiative and Mobius. We love all of our sponsors, but these gave us the biggest amount, so we love them more. And their contribution help events like this happen. I will now go quiet. Take it up. Thank you, Rogan. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us today. We have a rather ambitious topic, and this is meant for the end users, so we aren't going to explore how to actually create any scripts or, or things of that nature. Uh, so I apologize if you were looking for that. That would be a great presentation, but this is more for uh, to give uh, end users a little bit better idea of seeing, understanding why they see what they see. And I do have a PowerPoint here that I will share, but we're not going to review the PowerPoint. I, I do want to um, say I'm gonna uh, hide my camera here I'm swiveling <laughs> I'm sure it's distracting uh, I want to say thank you to everyone for being here with us today I also want to thank your families and colleagues for helping you uh, be here with us today as well and so uh, for the PowerPoint that I'll make available it has a a lot of the terms that we're going to go over in it and uh, some links to some some different bugs that that are applicable and Let's see here. Uh, some of the the standing additional uh, permissions that you would need to consider, and and then some of the bugs. So, uh, please feel free to refer to it later on. But we're going to uh, try our luck <laughs> and go live. We are on a 3.7 sandbox, so if you'll please keep that in mind, it has all the con concerto uh, information on it. So we're first going to start in the standing penalties. So to access the standing penalties, you go to administration local administration, standing penalties. Now, the standing penalties are global, uh, meaning the entire consortium shares them. There is not a way to scope standing penalties to just a system or to a library. So for example, if your library did not want to prohibit patrons, can I increase my screen size? Rogan is, I, I forgot what, how they can expand their screens. I can. There is a, there are a couple of things they can do. Um, there is in the bottom right hand, a little sort of square bra brackets graphic. They can use that to go full screen. It will remove the text chat, but it will expand uh, all the visual space on their screen. Thank you, Rogan. And uh, Catherine, did my zooming in help a little bit? Perfect, thank you. Uh, and so if you, for example, don't want your patrons to be blocked from circulation if they have, if they exceed their fines, then that's something that you would have to discuss uh, at a consortium level because there's not a way for you to separate out your library's wishes from the others. If you needed to create a distinction such as our library doesn't stop patrons from placing holds on items that they have max fines and you, if the, and the rest, or and everybody else does, well, excuse me, let me reverse that. Let's say everybody else excludes holds from having um, too many fines, but we don't want to, so you try to create another standing penalty, you can do that, but you have to write the accompanying scripts to go with it. So the standing penalty that we're going to create would be applicable if we want to manually apply the standing penalty. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, and so let me expand out my rows here for just a second. Now let's please ignore the patron exceeds fines for a second because I have it set up for one of the examples that we're going to step through. But here's our beloved staff CHR. <laughs> Um, and it's a an alerting block on circulation holds and renew. So you're going to see the staff uh, is meant as a way of saying that staff members have applied this block and that the block is going to include circulation holds and renewals. Uh, can you also use the three dots? Let's see, three dots in the top. Did that help? Yeah, if you hover over um, right underneath where it says leave, it should show up as three little dots and give you a full screen option there. I have full screen but, now. Yeah, I was going to say, it looked to me like you already did. 
Okay. Does is that I can't see chat now. Right. Um, so I have it full screen, but I'm not I'm not capable of seeing the chat now. But I can watch out for chat and tell you if people have questions. If that helps. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and so I wanted to mention looking at this broad overview or the patron exceeds fines for a second. Out of the box, the invalid patron date phone, these these guys that we see right here with the zeros, org depth of zero, those are all out of the box and the org depth of zero is the consortium. The rest of the standing penalties that you see here out of the box where no org depth is described, then Evergreen is looking at the, or, the workstation that the penalty has occurred at. So for example, with your staff CHR out of the box, it's that whatever staff applied penalty you have or block that you've made on that patron account, it's going to be applicable to the patron at the workstation that this penalty was uh, created. It, if the patron goes over to branch B, branch B is not going or encounter this block on the patron. So if your consortium, and again, you can't scope this per library, it needs to be a consortial decision. So if your consortium feels that it's vital that everyone sees any potential staff applied blocks on the patron's accounts, you'll need to come and scope your org depth out to zero. So again, let's ignore the patron exceeds fines. By default, I do believe that is also at the, brand, the workstation level. Uh, but these guys are definitely set the way out of the box. Uh, and so let's go ahead and um, uh, actually let's take a look at the block list while we have it handy for us and, and talk about what they, the different ones mean. CERC is a block on being able to check out materials. Hold, we're going to skip around here. Hold is placing a block on the patron's ability to place a hold. And renew is a block on the patron's ability to renew their items. And then you have capture and fulfill that were introduced a bit later, but they've been around for a while. Capture puts a block on the actual capturing of a hold. So you might configure your, your standing penalties to where the patron can place a hold, but then the staff members won't actually go and capture the hold. It won't be on the pull list um, for the, the staff member to actually capture. Or you might choose to have a block on fulfill. So the patron can place a hold and then the staff member will capture the hold. The hold will be on the hold shelf waiting for the patron when they come in to uh, check out the hold, then there'll be the fulfill will will uh, cat will be a penalty on the patron. So some libraries make that configuration choice as a way to get the patron back through the door. Uh, and so let's create a new standing penalty. And so the block list defines what we're going to block. We're just going to block circ on here. If you needed to add extra, you would use a pipe, the pipe symbol to, to separate your different blocks. Ignore proximity. I have a different example set up for us to explore ignore proximity, but what ignore proximity does is it allows for you to skip over your your level, your 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 library or your system or maybe your sub-library to not be considered in this penalty. So for example, if you have the org depth set to zero and then you have the ignore proximity to two, that means if the patron exceeds their fine, again, we're going to take a look at that the patron would be held to the penalty for exceeding fines at the, the uh, library outside of your system, but not within your system. And again, uh, we're going to take a look at it at that, but the patron and the item have to match up within that proximity. Next, we have a label. The label is what you, you'll see in the drop down when you manually apply a penalty to the patron. And uh, so we're going to name it. We're going to have two different names here so you can see where that looks like. The name is what your staff members actually see when they try to check out to the patron and they see this actual penalty. So we're putting a block on CERC. So when we put this uh, standing suspended patron manual stand, uh, block on the patron's account when the staff member tries to check out to the patron the name is the reason they're going to see for why the circulation cannot occur
we're going to go ahead and scope this out to our consortium. Again, the default would be at that workstation. Staff alert is what will put that text in red for your staff members. If not, it, it just treats it more of a like a silent note. So we're going to put a staff alert and save. And we're going to come back to this, but first we're going to go and look at our group penalty thresholds and kind of cover the different um, naming, the, what the different, how to set a group penalty threshold up. So for group penalty thresholds, we go to administration, local administration, group penalty thresholds. Uh, you can scope it. It's scoping to the library that I'm logged in at, but we can go to cons and we can scope it by ancestors or descendants. And so when you set up your group penalty thresholds, and I do hope to get to it, and I think I saw April in the audience. Hi, April. April put in a, an interesting um, bug that's been out for a while, uh, and it affects when you set up your group penalties at the system level. So I do hope to get to that. And uh, we're first going to take a look at setting the effects of setting up the group penalty thresholds at the consortium level. And so you can use the rule of inheritance with the group penalty thresholds, though. So, for example, if you have the, uh, the patron exceeds fines at the consortium level at $10, but then li Library B has their patron exceeds fines set at $5, Evergreen will honor that $5 versus the 10 uh, and then we also have the the um, the inheritance when it comes to the patrons group. So uh, all the other users in the consortium can have, uh, in this example, can have a, um, a checkout count of 10 items, whereas our temporary patron can only have two. So Evergreen's going to recognize that distinction. We're going to create a new group penalty threshold. So you define which uh, patron group and we're going to say temporary here. And again, we're just going to set this up at the consortium level, uh, acknowledging that a lot of consortiums out there do set it up at the, the individual system levels and some of those implications. And we're going to do patron exceeds fines as our penalty. And so for the threshold, we're going to put their threshold at $5. So, Again, let's save. So again, this is an example where everybody else in the consortium can uh, ex can um, have a threshold of $10, whereas our temporary patron is only going to be able to have $5. Now, while we're on this topic, and uh, I, rem I remember, <laughs> when it comes to the fines, if the patron gives you one penny and gets their fine down to $9.99, so if they owe you $10 and they give you one penny and they get it down to $9.99, that does clear that that penalty for them. Evergreen does not make you pay the entire charge off. So if they owe you $10, there's not a mechanism in Evergreen that makes the patron pay that full $10. That would be an in-house manual process, a policy that you adopt. But at Evergreen, I know other ILSs do accommodate that, but not Evergreen. Evergreen just wants it below that threshold, however you define it. Uh, and quickly, we are going to take a look at notices and action triggers. So under administration, local administration, and I apologize, I feel like I'm talking really fast, but we've got quite a bit to go through. Uh, and notifications, action triggers. There are a few hooks um, already pre in the default evergreen. I'm going to filter for a specific name here. That not that should be the name. Okay, we'll just look for it. Just letting you know while we have a quiet moment that there are no questions yet. But thank you. I don't I don't know what happened to my <laughs> let's try it this way. Murphy's Law, what can go wrong in a live demo will. We'll just do it this way. 
there we go. <laughs> so there is an, an out of the box um, notice already for fine limit exceeded. So if we click into the the parameters of the 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 action trigger, we can see that this is an actual notice that we can send out to the patron, uh, letting them know that they've they've surpassed their fine limit. And then I also wanted to point out under the hooks that there are a few other preloaded hooks available. I didn't notice any notices that go along with them out of the box, but there are some, some hooks already available to you. Again, this, this um, presentation is not going into the specifics of writing the script and making the event definitions. We're just sticking to a, a, a manual process in, in for today. But I did want to make you aware that these exist and that you can use them and you can create more. So next, we're going to take a look at the patron notes and alerts and how those are affected by our standing penalties and, um, uh, well, our standing penalties. So I'm going to go to checkout. I already have some notes already set up for us. So we'll go through them. All right, so we're on the alerting page when we first go into our patron's account. This is good. And so we can see the alerts and, and different, um, I don't have any actual blocks um, on the patron yet. Uh, so let's take a look at how these different um, notes and alerts were created. Uh, as a brief overview, the forgave finds is in the edit interface. The patron left laptop is in the messages interface and the notes um, it takes us into the notes that, and I've created a note under the, the notes section that we're going to take a look at. But let's first take a look at um, the alert message within a patron's edit interface. So when you're editing a patron account or you are registering a new patron, you do have this free text box for alert message that you can use. I know it's um, very popular among the librarians. It's very convenient. It's also a very convenient place to put notes while you're registering the, your patrons. This particular uh, message alert field is there's no blocks. It's just an alert and it does not require initials. There's not a mechanism to require initials here. And so again, the, the message we've created in the alert message uh, is defined or summarized under the patron's name here. Next, we have the, the notes. So under other, we have notes. When you create a note uh, under the other option, it will appear in this indicator next to the patron's name and the number of them. This might be how some of your migrated notes came over, depending on um, how you migrated and what your notes were. Some, some libraries choose to bring them over as just these regular notes. Some choose to bring them over as alerts, and some choose to bring them over as staff CHR, which we'll get to here in a second, because a lot of libraries do um, have penalties in their legacy ILS. Legacy just means the pri previous ILS. They might have notes in their legacy that it was actually was a penalty, but they're not necessarily concerned with it being um, treated the same way or, or they are wanting it to be treated the same way. So they might bring hundreds of patrons over with a penalty. And then on the first day, their staff members are encountering a lot of staff CHR uh, and trying to figure out what's going on. So. Uh, that is something to keep in mind. Um, but so with the C, with the notes, let's add, we're not going to add a new note, but I want to point out you can create a title and a value. And in this particular interface, it allows you to create a patron visible note as I've made here uh, in the example. It, it will actually display in the patron's OPAC account. So um, let's keep so if you need to let the patron know in some capacity that they left their library card there or something of that nature, you can uh, put make it patron visible and they'll see it in their OPAC account. This is one of the interfaces that requires initials if you have the library settings. Uh, there's two library settings. I have them listed in the PowerPoint for enabling the initials. And then finally, we have messages. 
And this is uh, this is the, where the staff CHR comes into play. And so I've created a regular note and an alerting note. And as you can see, note, no blocks, alerting note, no blocks. If we go back into our standing penalties and do a comparison, the alert note, um, let's do it this way. When we click apply penalty and message, the first note is just a silent note and it's corresponding to silent note in your standing penalties. It's just a note, no blocks and no staff alert. You can come in here and edit and change that. But again, it, the change would affect the entire consortium. So this is looking at it out of the box and a lot of consortia don't really touch this interface too much. And then we have alert. And that is corresponding to our alert note. And so this is an alerting note, no blocks, and it does provide a staff alert. So that's where that's pulling from. And then finally, we have our block. And if we were to just use block and put our whatever the, 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 the messages for that block, then it's corresponding to our staff CHR. So for some of you who might have migrated over with a, a, a block on the patron's account and you're encountering staff CHR, that's because the, the block was um, set in this interface. Uh, or maybe another staff member has come in and set a block. So when you see staff CHR, it lives in this apply standard penalty block. We also earlier created that penalty for the patron account suspended. And so since we've set it up to be manual under penalty type, it's now going to display for us. So suspended patron, that is the label that we created for our standing penalty. And I'm gonna have to put in my initials. Again, that's a library setting. To, to do that. Now you can see here under library, um, it kind of gives us an indicator of where these standing penalties org depths are living. So for this, the block that we created for suspended patron, we did set it out to the consortium. These other penalties are using the defaults, which is our workstation library login. Now, if we go and attempt to check out to this patron, let's just refresh just to be sure, but I don't know if it would require that. Um, let's grab an item. Uh, it's unable to check out item, and the reason is patron account suspended. So the name that we gave the stand-in penalty is what the staff member will see as the reason. So for staff CHR, when you just put a block and you and you don't pick a different penalty type, it defaults to staff CHR, and that's where that's that would be pulling from if you encounter that. So we're not going to finish that checkout. But, but that's how that all pulls together. So again, you can create standing penalties for being able to apply them manually to the patron account. If you want something further for automated reasons, action triggers, things of that nature, you would need to develop the, the scripts, the code, things of that nature to go along with it. Next, we're going to take a look at um, the ignore proximity. So let's go back to, um, we can just close that out. In our standing panel interface, again, I have my patron exceeds fines threshold um, modified. So the org depth, I have the org depth for this standing penalty set to the consortium. So anybody at this, everybody at the consortium will see that this patron exceeds fines. But I have the ignore proximity set to two, which means it's not going to apply to, to my direct members, my direct system members. So in con 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 the, the sandbox, we have branch one and its sub library as a system. So in this example, 
my patron in branch one or it's my sub library would not be held to this patron exceeds fines but if the patron goes over to branch three which is outside of the system they will or if i try to check out an item from branch three to this patron it will apply so we'll take a look at that example uh, let's check out And I have the, um, the, the again, if, if you remember from at the consortium level, our group penalty threshold for patron exceeds fines is set to $10. So our patron owes us $11, so they're currently exceeding the, the fine threshold. And so if we check out to this branch one patron at branch one with a branch one item, it's going to allow the checkout. If I try to then check out a book from branch three, which is outside of my system, it should stop us. So let's see. Perfect. So uh, it's recognizing that, yes, I'm at branch one, my patron is at branch one, but this is a branch three item, therefore the patron should be held to the exceeds fines penalty and should not be allowed to check out. The same action would happen if we were to log out and log back in at branch three. Branch three would also stop the hold because it's outside of that ignore proximity rule. I'm talking really fast. <laughs> We're almost done. <laughs> okay. Uh, next, we have move patron from one group to another uh, to take a look at how that behaves. So let's go back and take a look at our um, group penalty thresholds. Again, let's scope that back out. So for my temporary patrons, which is a pretty common scenario, temporary patrons, they might have to pre present a documentation to you or, uh, for lack of a better word, prove that they will bring your materials back. So until then, you might have a lower threshold for them than what you might have for your other patrons. So in this scenario, our temporary patrons are only allowed to check out two items, whereas everybody else, two total items, while everybody else can only have uh, what can have 10 in this uh, scenario. So we're going to uh, check out uh, to my temporary patron. So the temporary patron already has two items checked out. So if now they've, they've um, they're they're in good graces with you and you want to change their user group out to the normal patron we're going to edit and we're going to give them our, our regular patron permission group at this point uh, it's still showing this penalty we will we can shift reload but it's going to stay the penalty, once the penalty is on the patron, it doesn't retroactively when you change their patron uh, type. So if we try to check out to the patron, it's going to let us know that we have the maximum checkouts, so we cancel. So what we need to do in this case, since we've given Norma a different profile, we need to go into her messages and we need to um, we can either i forgot to mention this um, you can either re completely remove a penalty within the messages interface modify the penalty or archive the penalty uh, and so this is the only only interface that you can archive so if for going back to that topic of the alert message in the edit interface or those notes if you needed to maintain them but you were trying to get them out of that interface you would need to place them into the messages and then archive from there there isn't a mechanism to archive those from their respective 
interfaces. There is a current consolidation project underway to consolidate all the notes, alerts, and messages into one interface. I have the bug referenced on the PowerPoint. I highly encourage you to go in and take a look at it. I will mention that it it does take the alert message off of um, the patron edit. Again, that's a very helpful feature when you are uh, registering patrons. Um, so I do encourage you to go and take a look at that development and explore it and, and provide your feedback. Community feedback would be very, it's, it's much needed and it would be very beneficial. Um, and so for going back to the workflow of changing Norma's um, patron type, we need to remove the penalty now that it doesn't apply to her. So we're going to remove the penalty off of her account. Um, let's just refresh here. It should remove it now. There we go. And now we can continue our checkout to her to the, the next limit, which would be 10 at that consortium level for the users. So that's how you clear, you would clear that out. Um, and then another, th uh, along the same lines, so let's come and take a look at those group penalties. Sometimes when consortia are get, just getting started or maybe the um, ideologies shift over time, the, they might start off with group penalties at the consortium level. And then over time, the systems might be creating their own instead. And that there might be a bit of a limbo before the older libraries that are still looking at the consortium level versus the, the new libraries using system. Uh, or you might decide to scope between patron or users, and then that might put some staff members in limbo with their accounts. So if you have already been using a consortium level, or any level, I should say, uh, of a penalty, you wouldn't want to just come in here and delete it. I know there are other interfaces in Evergreen where if it's associated with a patron or associated with an item, it, it kind of asks you, are you sure you want to do that? But the group penalty threshold doesn't function that way. So let's take a look at... Um, Erica, yes. uh, Michelle has a couple of quick questions. One, will that penalty ever go away now that the patron's profile has been changed, or will it stay until it's manually removed? It will stay until you remove it. It's it doesn't retroactively go away. Um, well, well, it might go away after you check everything in. That's something to actually test. But I, so I, yeah, I would I would think because by then when you check everything in, the penalty is is essentially removed at that time too, and then it's starting it would start fresh and see that you are a, of a patron and not the temporary. So that's still the act of removing the penalty, though, just in a different form. Is there another question? Can't, uh... That was it. I, um, although Keen does ask if we have a link to that bug tracker. I'm assuming they mean uh, to a ticket and launch pad for that. Which which one? He doesn't say, but I will I will prompt you with the question if he follows up with being more specific. There's, there's a few in here. Let's take a look there. So. Um, uh, I'm not sure which one I, I feel like they're all listed in here. Um, so let's take a look at, um, open a new tab here. Let's take a look at a patron, um, who might have some legacy thresholds on their account. So the patron, this patron owes us $20 and 40 cents in fines and the page, so they exceed the fine threshold. So if we come in and we just delete the patron exceeds fines at the consortium level,
it successfully deletes. That does not take those fines off the patron's account. So I, it might be, you know, if you're if you're looking at libraries that have been using the consortium level for years, and you've got hundreds of patrons who owe bills or are over that threshold, that's something to consider if you are getting ready to remove a penalty or adjust your penalties. That there might be some additional um, reporting that you might need to to run and adjust those accounts, adjust the billing because just removing the penalty or adjusting the penalty does not automatically take that off of the patron's accounts. So that's something that's really important to keep in mind. So we have time to take a look at um, um, a, a bug that um, April submitted. Oh, I don't remember which one it is here. Uh, penalty threshold only applies to bills created by that org unit. So let's take a look at that one. Is that April? If you're still with us, we will. Well, let's just look. Yep, that's the one. Okay, so let's let's take a look at that and and see about it. Um, so we've removed the consortium max fine. That's okay. It, it wouldn't matter anyway. It's not going to catch. Uh, the, the scenario. So the scenario is library A has, and again, this goes back to originally when we were talking about how um, when you set up your group penalties, you do need to um, kind of decide, is it going to be at the consortium level? Is it going to be at the system level? How do the systems interact with each other? Because sometimes in a consortium environment, you might be a consortium, but you're not really resource sharing. Uh, so those are, there's multiple factors there that could come into play with how you determine to set this up. But the scenario um, is library A has a maximum fine rule of $10, and uh, library B does as well. Uh, but we have it set up at the system level because maybe library C down the road is allowed to have a maximum fine of $30. So a consortium level setting wouldn't work in that case. And so let's create two new group penalty thresholds. Um, we're just going to keep it at users. So we're going to create one at branch one. Patron exceeds fines. And we're going to give them a $10. And then we're going to create another one. Users. Um, branch three, since they're in a different system. these fines. I'm going to give it the same threshold. So we can see all of our descendants here. So we have our branch one and our branch two. Um, so let's see. Let's go to this patron. I had this set up if we had time. So bear, please bear with me. I was so nervous about not having enough time. <laughs> so we have Victor uh, here with us, and we're going to bill the patron, give him a manual billing of, let's say, $11 again here. So now they're hitting the fine threshold of $11 at branch one. Now, if um, Victor goes to branch three at a different system. So we're going to log out. And we're going to, um, Victor's now at branch three. <gasps> Password reset. <laughs> All right, so now if we check out to at branch three, the patron has the same fine threshold at the other system, 
that they've defined. However, when we go to this patron, going to let us need to bring their fine threshold up to that same $10 level at branch three. So we would have to bill this patron an additional $10. Let's refresh here. Now they're going to exceed threshold because now they've hit the $10 at our library, at our branch. Scoping the standing penalty for um, scoping the standing penalty out because it's still actually out for us does not make a difference there. It's it's the group penalty threshold that's making that distinction uh, that causing that behavior. Those are the examples that I had. I, I do apologize that I sped through it, but I was uh, concerned about not having enough time. I'm going to exit the full screen and open it for any questions or community discussions amongst uh, the group. Are there any questions or anything that you wanted to take a look at? Um, and uh, when when there is a group fine for families, how do you find connect members? In Evergreen, you cannot. So let's take a look at, um, uh, let's search for patron. The In Evergreen, patrons are autonomous of each other. So we're in branch three, so let's stay focused there. Let's find another patron. Do they owe us fines? They will here in a second. Perfect. Uh, give me one second to set this up, please. We need to get them some fines. The fine generator is not on in the sandbox, so we have to do it this way. <laughs> All right, uh, and then, um, so where's, let's try to link these people. So when you have members grouped together, you uh, can see, oh, yeah, okay, so the group fine, that's new. But if you go into bills, you can't pay the group's fines. Uh, you would need to display the, the group member details. And then you would need to go actually into Steven's account to pay the balance. There's not a way from Evelyn's account, Elvin, Elvin's account to to pay the 2040 that that Stephen owes. But you can you can view it. Uh, that displays a little bit different. It used to be over here. 
but you can come into group member details. But from the billing interface within the primary account, there's not going to be a way to pay that $20 because the, they're grouped, but they're still autonomous of each other. You're welcome. Um, let's see. Some of your legacy messages have the type grocery. <laughs> yes, Tracy. So when during a migration, um, the any billing that came over from your legacy system has to be applied manually and that's what grocery means it's the old school definition of 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 manual um so it's the same thing that when you bill a patron type is grocery so that's all that means it just means that it was a manually applied bill versus something that evergreen did automatically so let's go look at their bills so the type is circulation here and that means that the evergreen automatically applied that billing so that's the difference between the terminology so when you see grocery that just means someone came in and and manually applied it uh, it used to actually be visible to the patrons in the opac also so you'd get patrons coming in asking why they owed you $20 in groceries. So that's been removed in the OPAC and you can come in and adjust your columns to not have to see it, but that's what grocery means when you encounter it. Absolutely, April. Um, Bradley says, I always thought it was a pay for your fines with a can of food. You can actually do that, but it's under payment type um, goods. So for libraries that do canned food, food drives, you can, the library can recognize the payment type. So that, that's a little bit different than the being charged. It would be the payment type of goods, but some libraries actually do use the canned food drives to, for the payment type of goods. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't mention to patrons that they owe grocery bills. <laughs> but it is it is good that it's removed from the OPAC. Uh, I wish there was an easier way of retrieving group members, but it's better than our old system. Um retrieving oh, I, I get what you're saying. So when yeah, um it, kind of more of a bundled grouping. Yeah. So Evergreen's um uh, uh, there's no intentions of breaking up that autonomy of the individual patrons. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Rogan, for that clarification. With migrations, we do assign the bills as groceries because we don't have the circulation to attach to it. That's a very good point. Thank you, Rogan, for that clarification. Uh, Risa, I think work probably needs to be discussed at some point. I have worked with the few libraries that use work. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how you how you quantify quali quantify what the payment would be though. But yes. Uh -huh. uh, Josh mentions uh, Blake wrote a script to recalculate fines based on penalties. Um, here's the link that he gave. It's in chat. Uh, Debbie, are you asking Ruth that question? Because libraries don't usually... Yeah, okay. Does anyone have any uh, questions about standing penalties or the group the group penalty thresholds? April, does anyone know if there is currently a wish list bug for having penalties that apply to grouped accounts? I have not seen that going through the bugs, April. That doesn't mean there's not one out there, but I haven't seen that. 
how would you envision that that working um, with the patrons being autonomous of each other? Right. Yeah, that would make sense in, in in a legacy because those legacies still don't have that. They they are like if you're coming from um, a system that is designed for schools, for example, and they have they're designed to where it's maybe like a teacher with grouping all their students together. That's an example where the, the they're 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 not autonomous of each other. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, Michelle wants to mention this bug. Let's take a look at it. Yes, the, the standing penalty end user visibility la uh, label. That's that's been a topic of discussion. You um, you can go in on your. Um, I know this is referring to more of the out of box structure, but you can go in on your um, standing penalties. Um, maybe on the back end and rename it on the back end. Um, you could also alternatively set it to where it's the label, but alerting block on circ hold renew is not any more helpful. But there has been more discussion of that. Where did I just put that link? So yes, please feel free to and join in on the conversation on here. Comments and Discussions are always welcome on Launchpad. Look at the heat on that one. So April Keen says the workaround that they do is they manually block group members. And then you have to go back and unblock once the funds are paid. So April's mentioning um, kind of maybe a vision where um, the group fine. Now we've lost our group fine. What happened? <laughs> ah. Anybody know why that just disappeared on us? Huh. <laughs> In the summary. Yeah. Oh, so you're envisioning putting some kind of penalty, attaching the penalty there with the total load. Gotcha, I understand. Um, the labeling for staff CHR is um, confusing. An alternative would be to set up your different standing penalties and when you do actually apply a penalty to a patron for the block, instead of just clicking block and writing your, your reason, to actually have your penalty type set up. Um, 
have a workflow where you uh, staff members are using the drop down. Uh, Ryan's asking, does CERT cover all checkouts and fulfill just hold checkout, or do you need both in some cases? Um, you you could do, um, mm, fulfill is separate from the CERC, so because the it's recognizing that the item is on the hold shelf for that particular patron, so it, it is a little bit different than the CERC, so you'd you could, you'd probably want to use both together, but they are going to be looking at a little bit uh, thing during the process. So, um, fulfilling the hold is going to be different than just a regular circulation based on the status. Are there any other questions or group discussions? Well, I would like to thank you all again for joining us and I do hope that this you found this helpful and helps explain some of the stuff that uh, you see uh, in circulation. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you, Erica. That was great. Thank you. Uh, there should be another program popping up in here in just a minute, folks. Um, but I have.